Biogas is a renewable source of energy that can be used for heating, cooking, lighting, and for generating electricity. It is most useful in rural and agricultural areas where farming is prevalent and where energy is unaffordable, unreliable, and impossible to obtain. There are true primary methods associated with the production of biogas. I'm going to talk about the method that involves anaerobic digestion and converts organic waste into methane and carbon dioxide. Almost any organic material can be processed into biogas with anaerobic digestion. This includes biodegradable waste materials such as paper, grass clippings, leftover food, sewage, and animal manure. In fact, any of these waste materials, were, if they were left to decompose naturally, they would most likely break down anaerobically to form methane and carbon dioxide in the outside air. Methane is 21 times as much of a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide, and therefore it is a significant contributor to global warming. However, if this methane is contained in an anaerobic digester, it can be used to replace energy derived from fossil fuels, and hence reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. Biogas, by the way, is not a new concept. The first anaerobic digester was built by a leper colony in Bombay, India in 1859. When combusted in a household, biogas does not produce noxious odors as we may think. Instead, it provides a clean burning flame source uh, similar to liquid propane gas. Now as of 2000, 2.9 million home biogas digesters have been produced in India for use with ruminating animals. Considering this number, there is not a need for technological advancement in biogas mitigation for India like there is for the Philippines. In Nepal, there have been 200,000 digesters produced. However, Nepal does not have the climate that supports thermophilic anaerobic digestion like the Philippines does, nor does Malta. In fact, out of the 17 countries that we researched, we have found that the Philippines has the highest potential to reap the benefits of this emerging biofuel technology to its fullest. Currently, there are less than 1,000 digesters in the Philippines. Compared to other developing countries, the Philippines has a tropical climate with ambient temperatures and humidity that are perfect for biogas. They also have a bursting population that supports a robust pig farming industry. This industry is re responsible for huge amounts of fugitive biogas emissions since both pigs and poultry create biogas, more biogas than any ruminating animal ever could. I'm going to show you a simple and affordable system that has been designed by one of our engineering contacts, Gerardo Baron. There are three principal products of anaerobic digestion, biogas, digestate, and water. And if you look at this design, you'll notice that the digestate can be put down inside this, this shaft in that main column, the, the, the rectangle there. Um, the digestate can be, as I mentioned, any form of anaerobic, I'm sorry, organic material. Once this uh, anaerobic digestion occurs over a 24 to 48 hour period, we are able to produce methane and carbon dioxide, approximately 60 to 70 percent methane in that mixture. As you can see, the bladder will inflate to about 2 to 3 psi, and that methane, that biogas, is collected in that. We can siphon that off as soon as we attain enough pressure. So there is an opportunity, however, for the Pavlis Institute to improve this technology. Baran suggests that there is a need for the inexpensive storage of biogas produced by small digesters. Backyard pig farms with 10 to 50 pigs can usually use all the biogas that they produce for cooking. Farms with 50 or more pigs can produce lots of biogas, but they may not be able to use all of it, and therefore they have to burn it off. Large farms with 2,000 or more pigs use their biogas to generate electricity but they are unable to store this biogas for use during high demand periods when they need it the most. And of course, safety is an issue with a volatile gas such as methane. One of our contacts, Dr. Richard Ulrich from the University of Arkansas, suggests that the best way to contain excess gas for storage in a farm would be to fill a bladder with the excess production. This bladder could be housed in a barn or a shed to shield it from any possible spark ignition. It can be fenced off away from any development so that animals, 
children or anybody else wouldn't wander around near it. Thermal or solar heat would not in induce combustion with this type of a system since it's contained. I'm also going to address the issue of cost. The price of Baron's, I'm sorry, Baron's home biogas system is approximately $400 per unit. So how do we obtain funding for this type of system, especially if we have more than one unit? Anaerobic digestion facilities have been recognized by the United Nations Development Program as the most useful decentralized source of energy supply, since they, since they are less capital intensive than large power plants. So far in the United States, I'm sorry, in the Philippines, 41 biogas digesters have been funded by the United Nations Development Program. In order to receive funding, you must provide evidence that a pro, uh, proposed biogas system will, re will indeed reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Another source of funding that we have available to us is through Eric Hallinan, the Director of Major Gifts Planning at Michigan Tech, as well as Sandra Lewin. They are willing to help us obtain additional money for this endeavor by resourcing the Tech Fund database. Through this database, we can find and request financial assistance from Michigan Tech alums, veterans, or families of veterans who were stationed in the Philippines during and after World War II. In conclusion to this portion of the presentation, I would like to mention that the Pavlis Institute has a unique opportunity to pioneer in the engineering and deployment of efficient, sustainable, and affordable energy using simple and inexpensive anaerobic digesters. We are also in communication with Dan Nover and Matt Kucharski from the MTU Peace Corps Masters International Program. Dan recently worked in the Philippines involving the disinfection of sustainable drinking water. After considering all of this and being mindful of the relationships that we have established with faculty and students from Michigan Tech, Duke University, the University of Arkansas, University of Wisconsin, Michigan State University, De La Salle University in the Philippines, Asia Pacific College in the Philippines, and the University of Philippines in Laguna, Los Banos, I'm going to ask you to consider our request to continue with this project in the Philippines. I'm also going to ask you to support our technological and humanitarian endeavors, which will undoubtedly affect tangible change, real world change in this developing country. Thank you.